point something out to make sure that it was clear. Under the Nurse Practice Act, um, the registered nurse has 10 components, and then the licensed practical nurse also has seven components. I, I know I said that LPNs do not assess patients, um, the RN does, and they assess the patient's physical and mental health, including the patient's reaction to illnesses and treatment. They also, the RN records and re reports the results of the nursing assessment, but also the LPN can report and record um, the results of the nursing assessment. Okay? Make sure that that's clear. They can participate in the assessment and report and record the results. Okay, just want to make sure that was clear. And then we'll go over our evidence based practice after the break. Okay. Um, all right. About defining health policy. Health policy is the actions and decisions made by the government bodies and professional organizations. Um, health policy influences actions and decisions of individuals <coughs> and organizations within the health care system. They focus on how organizations function within the socioeconomic and political environment. Nurses are in a unique position uh, because we have many roles. We are caregivers, teachers, advocates, researchers, communicators, counselors, change agents, leaders, managers, case managers, and consumers. Um, this creates context for policy issues, and so nurses can shape policy planning. Uh, American Nurses Association promotes health care reform, the health care reform agenda, um, and believe that basic care should be for all, all citizens equally distributed. Um, here's a little um, why is health policy relevant to nurses? You see the health policy and the nurse in the middle and all the branches out that, that are connected with nursing. Um, developing health policy, policy development is affected by a lot of different things like the they, have, they have to look at the cost-benefit ratio, um, look at the present client care issues, and make sure that there's equity of access, equal access. Um, they use a problem-solving framework like scientific method. The um, first one is formulation, and it's kind of like assessment and planning. Data is collected and used to define the problems and identify desired outcomes. Implementation, um, communication about of the adopted policies, putting policies into action, and evaluation, which is additional data collected and analyzed to determine the degree to which the policy change met the desired outcomes. Um, these are enacted by governmental entities through specific agencies and in increments, um, federal, state, local levels. Health Care and Education Recon Reconciliation Act of 2010 um, said that we can't deny insurance due to anyone's pre-existing condition. Um, one of our exemplars are regulatory agencies. And regulatory agencies um, help providers and agencies operate safely, legally, honestly, and effectively. Eight, these agencies typically enforce laws, and individuals are regulated by licensure boards. Federal, federal agencies, like the Department of Health and Human Services, principal agency, they, they, this is the principal agency for the protection of health of all Americans, including essential human services for those least able to care for themselves. Um, there are some 300 divisions and programs. OSHA uh, works to ensure health, safety in the workplace and provides guidelines, monitors compliance, provides training, 
outreach, education, offers technical assistance, consultation, and most employees in the nation are under OSHA and issues uh, standards for a wide variety of hazards. OSHA regulations um, require the use of sharps containers to discard all used needles. State and local <coughs> agencies administered through State Health and Human Services, HHS, oversee regulation of county health departments, health care settings, child care centers, clinical labs, portable x-ray suppliers, medical facility and planning, plan, medical facility planning and construction. Um, the Office of the Emergency Medical Services, or OEMS, environmental health or like regulations. Um, local health departments oversee a variety of health policies and regulations. They monitor diseases and um, do surveillance on diseases. They are responsible for child care center sanitation and food safety. And they're, um, they're, uh, they work towards injury prevention campaigns and do special supplemental nutrition programs for women, infants, and children called the WIC program. Sorry, I'm hot. Uh, another exemplar are accrediting bodies. Accreditation is peer review process for measuring quality. Preparation requires self-review and standards of accrediting agencies provide structure. So nursing education program accreditation is recognized by the U.S. Secretary of Education. Um, one of those are the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, CCNE, and they oversee BSN programs and graduate programs. And then there's the um, National League for Nursing Accrediting Commission, NLNAC, and they accredit clinical doctorate degrees programs, masters, bachelorette, um, associates and diploma, and practical nursing. And our program is NLM accredited. So. Um, the Joint Commission is an independent nonprofit organization, and they set standards for accredits, set standards for and accredits healthcare organizations. Um, the Joint Commission's mission is to continuously improve safety and quality of care. Three functional areas addressed are infection control, patient's rights, and patient treatment. They focus on organization's ability to provide safe, effective care and actual provision of that care. About informatics, which is the science of computer information systems, Nursing informatics is the science of using computer information systems in practice of nursing, in the practice of nursing. Um, tools to process, manage, and analyze information. And all nurses must have a basic level of computer literacy. Overall uh, and overall informatics competencies. Private confidentiality, security of information, and recording data are insured um, with that. Clinical information systems may be designed for use within one department, um, data use, or can be data used by many departments. The goal is to access information quickly, safely, and avoiding duplication. And these may include like an electronic health records, clinical decision support systems, bedside medication administration, computerized provider order entry, client surveillance, and clinical data warehouse. 
nursing information systems support use and documentations of nursing processes and interventions, provide tools for managing the delivery of care, and must meet the goals um, to support the way nurses function and enhance the nursing practice. Some advantages of nursing information systems is that there's better access to information, enhanced quality of documentation, improved quality of care, increased productivity, improved communications, reduced hospital costs, reduced errors, and use of common database. Two approaches of the nursing information system is the traditional approach where they use the nursing process, and this is pretty much based on traditional paper forms, menu driven to capture essential information, uh, generates various reports information, documentation of discrete data, standardized care plans that can be individualized, and documentation of routine aspects of care and documentation of medication administration. Um, the clinical pathway approach is that interdisciplinary and protocols um, are for specific diagnosis and anticipated interventions and outcomes. They can follow a standard plan or an MD can individualize them for unique plant needs. The nurse or the provider can select pathways should merge into one master path, have interaction with physician orders, and tracking of protocol variances provides consistency and continuity of care, and reminds nurses of plan and guides documentation, which offers prompts to prevent leaving out important data. <coughs> Administrative support systems support client care, and, and these are like financial systems, payroll and human resource systems, um, contract management systems, risk management systems, quality assurance systems, physician management systems, executive information systems, and materials management systems. Some of the trends in, um, in computers are getting handheld devices, um, personal digital assistants, hybrid PDAs with cell phones, smartphones, MP3 players, computerized medical records, electronic health record, and electronic medical record, which is the legal um, hospital record, and source of data for the electronic health record. Talking about that. Um, the electronic medical record basic components are clinical messaging and email, results reporting, data re repository, which is a facility where things can be deposited for storage or safekeeping, uh, decision support, <coughs> clinical documentation, order entry, it includes unstructured data as text, report, H&P, history and physical, and structured data, data as set format, automated lab results, and electronic imaging. So the total record is electronic health record. And what this does is integrates all the pertinent client information into one record. So it's a lifetime computerized medical record. Um, this may improve the safety, provider productivity, contain costs, support research, and decrease wait time for treatment. The driving forces are client safety and cost contained. Contain that. Um, vendors and providers are working towards the electronic health record. Now, the electronic medical record, on the other hand, is an encounter record. So, this is the legal record created in the hospitals and ambulatory environments um, during each client encounter with the organization and is the source of data for the electronic health record and is owned by the organization. The general benefits of the electronic health record are to improve data integrity, increase productivity, improve quality of care, increase satisfaction to, for providers, universal data access, and improves documentation. Um, it, 
the electronic health record benefits nurses because it facilitates comparison of data, eliminates repetition. You don't have to go through that whole history and physical every time the patient comes in. It's right there. Um, supports the record of client education and improved data access for research and provides prompts, facilitates automation of clinical pathways and develops a database. Electronic health record benefits for health care providers as it reduces liability. Um, there's improved reimbursement, enhances compliance, supports pay for performance bonuses, early warning of changes in client status, and supports benchmarking. Electronic health record uh, health care facility benefits improved record security, instant notice of authorization, strengthened communications, fewer lost records, and decreased costs. For the consumer and the payer of payer benefits of the electronic health record, um, of course the consumer benefits is its decreased wait time because you've got it all right there for the provider, um, improved access, increased use of best practices, improved ability to ask informed questions, increased responsibility, alerts and reminders, and increased satisfaction. Um, the payer benefits, supports pay for performance as quality measures are gathered, supports disease management, lowering costs for expensive diagnosis. Intranets um, are private computer networks, in-house systems. Um, they use internet protocols and technologies. Facilitate collaborative data sharing. Firewall, um, so it's unavailable for outsiders. Mail messaging, sharing internal documents, conferencing, and access to clinical data, data to authorized users. Clients may also be able to access certain areas of the site. And telehealth, we have touched on before, is the use of telecommunication technologies and computers to exchange information. Um, they provide services to clients at remote locations to view diagnostic images, review slides, lab reports. Services include health promotion and disease prevention diagnosis and consultation, education and therapy, um, telehealth for healthcare professionals, you can get teleconferences and video conferences, you can consult with colleagues, you can access and monitor clients, um, you can extend scarce healthcare resources, decrease costs and improve coordination of care. <coughs> Also, um, tele telehealth benefits um, continuity of care, centralized records, incorporate consumer as a team member, collaboration among healthcare professionals, <coughs> improved decision making, and education of consumers and professionals. Um, telehealth applications are high and low tech applications, storage and dissemination of records, voice recognition recognition for dictations, video conferencing, and telephone. So here's some of the areas, the current and proposed telehealth applications for cardiology, counseling, data mining, dermatology, diabetes management, mobile unit post-disaster care, education, emergency care, fetal monitoring, geriatrics, home care, hospice, military, pathology, pharma, pharm pharmacy, social work, and virtual ICUs. Um, some of the barriers to telehealth are implementation, implementation barriers, reimbursement, licensure for all licensed professionals, and concerns about record privacy. Um, client participation barriers, as it requires expensive infrastructure, uh, socioeconomic, educational, and cultural factors are to be considered. Equipment needs, you need to have the hardware and the software, and you need to have internet access. E-Health 
itself um, is health information services and products provided by the internet. Um, and this has resulted in more educated consumers, which we've talked about before. Electronic submission of claims and payment. Um, some of the concerns is the quality of information and nurses have to be the guide to consumers to reputable sites. Also, another concern is security of data and personal information and reliability of systems, slowdowns, or collapses. Um, ergonomics is the study and design of the work environment that maximize productivity by reducing operator fatigue and discomfort. A um, couple of those problems are computer vision syndrome, eye strain, headaches, blurred vision or near vision, drier red eyes, and after back a double vision and light sensitivity. So we really need to look away from that com computer screen every few minutes. Um, it also can lead to repetitive motion disorders um, from using the same muscle groups over and over again without rest like carpal tunnel syndrome. We're seeing a lot more of that with our increased use of computers. So workstation sta ergonomics is to determine the use of the workstation, length of time user will be at the station, configure for specific equipment, select sturdy surfaces, supportive chairs, educate workers on good body mechanics, position monitors just below the eye level, adjust resolution as needed, and like I said, periodically look away from the monitor. This will help minimize screen glare, or try to minimize screen glare, take frequent breaks, avoid noisy locations, play, place workstation in well-ventilated area, use ergonomic devices with caution, use optical prescriptions designed for computer work, and provide adjust, adjustable lighting. <coughs> Some of the legal issues in nursing. Um, rights, resp responsibilities, and scope of nursing practice as defined by the State Nursing, nursing Practice Act, or Nurse Practice Act, um, legislated through criminal and civil laws. All clients have the privilege, demand, claim by virtue of the law, or right to expect competent nursing services. Remember that nursing students need to know the laws and regulations that affect nursing practice also. Um, a right is defined as that which is proper or just. Sources of the laws, uh, sum total of the rules and regulations by which a society is governed. Law made at the federal, state, and local level. Statutory law is made by legislative branch of government, U.S. Congress, state, city or county government. Nursing laws are state statutory laws. Other statutory laws affecting nursing practice are statutes of limitation, protect, protection and reporting laws, natural death acts, and informed consent laws, which we'll talk more about. Administrative laws are administration and enforcement delegated to administrative agencies by le legislative body. Um, like to the State Board of Nursing. About legal issues, criminal and civil laws address conduct harmful to another individual or society, and these may be punishable by fines or imprisonment. A crime is against the state rather than the individual, and this is an act prohibited by statute common law principles, or common law principles. Felonies are more serious crimes and misdemeanors are lesser offenses. Civil law deals with the rights and duties of private persons. So when we talk about law, we talk about tort, and that is the civil wrong committed against a person or a person's property, usually enforced by warning of damages or compensation. Some unintentional torts are negligence, which conduct that is defined as conduct that deviates from what a reasonable person would perform in a particular circumstance.
So a reasonable professional nurse standard, uh, injured party needs to prove that the other party had duty of responsible care, did not maintain reasonable care, and failure to maintain such reasonable care caused or resulted in injuries to the aggravated, aggrieved, excuse me, party. Uh, professional negligence is the standard of reasonable, standard of a reasonable person different from those in specific professional occupations. And it's measured by the standard of conduct of a reasonably skilled, competent, experienced person who is qualified, who is a qualified member of the group, of a group. Nursing student is held to the standard of conduct of experienced, licensed professional nurses. So as a nursing student, sometimes I've heard students say, well, I'm working under your license, and you actually are not. You are working under your own. <laughs> so you are, uh, your conduct needs to be that of a licensed professional nurse. So you are responsible for your own actions. Um, malpractice is the conduct deviating from the standard of practice can be acts or omissions. Any negligent act or omission may arise to, to the standard of malpractice. Intentional tort is assault, battery, or false imprisonment. So the five elements required to establish liability are the duty, um, which is the legal obligation to conform to a particular standard of conduct once the nurse assumes care. Breach of duty is the deviation from the standard of care. Foreseeability is able to reasonably anticipate specific results from certain events. In other words, the person should have known better because they should have anticipated the results of their action. Causation is injury must have resulted as a direct result of the nurse's, nurse's excuse me, breach of duty. And injury, injury or harm, the plaintiff must demonstrate physical, financial, or emotional injury resulting from the breach. So the basic purpose of malpractice lawsuit is to award damages sufficient to restore the plaintiff to, original, to their original position as far as financially possible. Um, the statute of limitations is the limit to the, to the amount of time that can pass between recognition of harm and bringing of a suit. And this varies with the type of suit in state. Um, but typically plaintiffs have a one to two year uh, window from the knowledge of injury to file their suit. So, as we said, intentional torts are assault, battery, false imprisonment, and invasion of privacy. Assault is defined as creating apprehensive of offensive, insulting, or physically injurious touching. It may occur without act actually touching the client, however. So, in other words, the victim feels threatened. Battery is the actual willful touching of another person that is unwanted embarrassing or unwarranted. False imprisonment is un unjustifiable detention of a person, which can be considered uh, using restraints without an order. Invasion of privacy is the Fourth Amendment, Amendment to the Constitution, where individuals have the right to privacy, including the use of the client's name and photographic, videographic rep representations and it extends to, control, to the control of the client's personal belongings and space and immediate territory. So we have to be careful when we go in their room that we're not rummaging through their things. Um, like I said, I do like you to pick up the room and tidy up, but you've got to be careful not to get into their stuff because it can be considered an invasion of their privacy. So, strategies to prevent incidents is to maintain client safety, very important. Falls, you know, you've got to keep those side rails up, but never to the point that it's a restraint. 
never all four side rails unless the patient um, wants them up. Of course, never leave babies unattended on bath tables. Uh, mistaken identity. It's very important that we properly identify our client before all nursing procedures. So even if you're going to put a catheter in, you need to ask their name and their date of birth. Um, and of course, with medication, <coughs> we want to minimize the risk of medication errors. So we want to use the five rights, which are right drug, right dose, right client, right route and right time. Those are all the five things you need to check every time you have a medication to administer. Um, an acronym to try to remember the five steps are MA and PA do ride train. Look at right medication, right patient, right dose, right route, and right time. Hope you remember those five. So events that contribute to incidences. I have not been going ahead. Have I? Or did I excellent push it? <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so events that contribute to incidents of professional negligence or malpractice, malpractice is documented medical errors, um, failure to follow a physician's orders, established protocols or policies, improper use of equipment or technology, failure to remove foreign objects from client, failure to provide sufficient monitoring and assessment of the client, so you really need to do hourly rounds, sometimes more frequently. And failure to communicate, notify, and or report key nursing information in a proper and timely manner. I've always told all my students I'd rather be yelled at but from a doctor that I call them than to be yelled at that I didn't call them. Uh, sometimes the night nurses are like, I hate to wake them up. But, you know, like I said, I'd rather be yelled out for calling, and they say, no, it's nothing, but at least you, you reported what you felt like you needed to report. So, so some other strategies to prevent incidents are using nursing judgment, and that's the best prevention for medication administration errors. Um, using effective communication helps decrease the risk of bad outcomes. Attentive listening demonstrates caring to the client <coughs> and accurate documentation and reporting. Um, everybody needs to have professional liability insurance. Nurses should carry to manage their personal financial risk and it usually it covers occurrence-based and claims-made policies. If it isn't documented, documented, it legally wasn't done. You'll hear that a lot. Nursing documentation is part of the legal record, but on the other hand, if it was documented and wasn't done, it's falsifying the records, which is also um, illegal. So you want to document everything you do, but don't document before you do it. You do document after you've done it. Um, types of liability insurance policies, individual, which we just talked about, and that provides the broadest coverage to policyholder covers the name policyholder as long as actions fall within the scope of practice. Your employer also uh, sponsors a coverage for you, in, but it's very narrow coverage for you and only covers actions while working at the institution um, that the employee works. So again, make sure you have your own coverage. Policies should identify and explain liability limits, declarations, deductibles, exclusives, reservation of rights, covered injuries, defense costs, coverage conditions, and supplementary payments. One of our selected laws is informed consent that you will have a lot of experience with. Um, and it's based on the autonomy principle. 
client's legal and ethical rights to it's the client's legal and ethical right to be informed of, give permission for procedure and treatment. Um, of course, the client must not be coerced into signing it uh, or giving permission. The client must understand it, essentially. Uh, follow agency-specific protocols in getting informed consent. Co and the uh, patient must be or client must be competent for consent. And then there's consent in an emergency, which we'll talk about, and child participation in the decision. Um, available alternatives need to be discussed, risk and benefits of each treatment option, um, and the clients need to know that they do have the right to refuse. So the information provided before consent is signed is, of course, diagnosis or condition, purposes of the treatment, what the client can expect to feel or experiences, experience, excuse me, intended benefits of the treatment, advantages, disadvantages of possible alternative, uh, including no treatment. <clears throat> and if the client is illiterate, a health care provider must read consent form and the client must state understanding. An interpreter must be present if the client does not speak the same language as a health care provider. So this is one incident where you definitely have your interpreter when there's a signing of the consent. Um, obtaining informed consent is res the responsibility of the per person performing the procedure or treatment. So um, this does not require the written consent before each occurrence. Like the nurse may be asked to witness the client's signature on the consent form and that's okay. The important thing is that the doctor or the provider has come in and explained the procedure. Ours is just witnessing their signature. Our responsibility is not to explain the procedure. And if their client has any questions and feels like they're unclear about the procedure or treatment, then we need to call the doctor and have them come back in and explain it. Um, Nurses rely on express consent or on or written agreement. So implied consent is based on the client's action. For example, the patient cooperating for, with the procedure, holding their arm out for an IV start, this is implied consent. We don't get a consent form for that. Um, they sign a form when they are admitted to the hospital for all of those things. And of course, they have the right to refuse, but implied consent is, you know, they're cooperating with us to, um, for us to do what we need to do. Okay, so informed consent. Uh, consent must be given by the client or the individual with capacity to understand. Competency for consent is a legal presumption applied to individuals when they become adults. In most states, this is considered at 18. 30 states and D.C. allow minor parents of a child to give informed consent for the child's medical care. Um, except in specific circumstances, the following individuals cannot provide <coughs> informed consent. So that would be a minor or person 18 years or younger, unless they're a parent of a child in the state that allows them to consent. Um, the unconscious or person injured in such a way that they are unable to consent or gradually incompetent due to dementia. Also, this would be considered if a, a patient was uh, receiving anesthesia. So you can never get a form, informed consent once they are um, receiving anesthesia or opioids, um, etc. This is considered that they're temporarily incompetent. So they, we still can't, if they're really not um, lucid, then we can't, we cannot um, obtain informed consent. Also, a mentally ill person judged by professionals and court order to be legally incompetent or not. A parent, legal guardian, or represent, representative provides or refuses consent for these individuals. Um, they can have like a health care surrogate or a health care power of attorney. Um, it's important to contact the primary care provider if there's any concerns about the client's competency level. Um, 
Um, Controlled Substance Act is a federal law, and this requires that drug classification be based on medical use, potential for abuse, and safety risks. Um, classifications are referred to as schedules, which are numbered from one to five, with one and two having the highest potential for abuse. And the Good Samaritan laws that, are requ that require nurses to provide uh, Good Samaritan laws, uh, most states have, and they encourage health providers to help victims in an emergency, uh, protects the health care workers from potential liability when volunteering um, outside the workplace, and nurses respo nurse responsible for following through with emergency care by providing care or placing victims in the care of a competent <coughs> or appropriate personnel. Um, so the Good Samaritan Law requires the nurse to provide only care that is consistent with the training level and licensure. Guidelines for nurses who choose to render emergency care include limit actions to those uh, normally considered first aid if possible. Do not perform actions which the nurse does not know how to perform. <coughs> Offer assistance but do not insist. Have someone call or go for additional help. And do not leave the scene until the injured person leaves or another qualified person takes over. And definitely do not accept compensation. Okay, so we'll come back and we'll talk about nurse practice now. Tell you what the licensure requirements are <laughs> and what the grounds for disciplinary, disciplinary actions are. And these are enforced by the state boards of nursing. For nursing, for the board of nursing. <coughs> Nurse Practice Acts define nursing, penalty for practicing without a license, exemptions from licensure, licensure across jurisdictions, and they have similar provisions from state to state for RNs. States may use other titles for this board. Board of Nursing serve as a forum for citizen complaints about nursing services and against individual nurses. And notice that the North Carol in North Carolina is the only state, which we've said before, where licensed nurses serving on the Board of Nursing are elected by other licensed nurses. So exercise your right to vote for nurses who trust to formulate and enforce standards of your practice. Where are we are unique in this privilege. <coughs> Licensure allows nurses the legal privilege to practice nursing as defined by the Nurse Practice Acts. Each Board of Nursing oversees the administration of a licensure examination for entry level nurses. So the National Council of State Boards of Nursing um, develop the National Council Licensure Examination for RNs and LPNs. Um, so the Board of Nursing establishes and monitors educational standards for nursing education programs, defines pro professional standards, examines and renews licenses of duly qualified applicants, <coughs> investigates violations, sanctions those who violate the Nurse Practice Acts, holds disciplinary hearings for possible license suspension or revocation, and establishes and oversees diversity programs in some states. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I just talked to you. Okay. Yes, shop, second floor. Okay. And it's this, the same place where Ms. Walker said she was going to meet. At one o'clock. So one o'clock. All right. Second Thank floor gift shop. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so the Board of Nursing um, responsibilities and are for actions against nurses found guilty for giving false information, nola contender, uh, neither admit or deny guilt, conduct 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 that endangers public health, 
unfit or incompetent to practice nurses, and engaging in contact that deceives conduct, excuse me, that deceives, defrauds, or harms the public. So the National Council of State Boards of Nursing membership includes boards of nursing in the 50 states and U.S. territories, and the functions are to support the services to the Board of Nurses, central repository of data, develops the net collects for RNs and LPNs, or PNs, conducts research on nursing practice, maintains nursing's database to coordinate national licensure information, promotes uniformity in regulation of nursing practice within the Board of Nurses. The uh, Nurse Licensure Compact is a mutual recognition model that allows nurses to have a single license that confers privilege to practice in other states that are, a, that are part of, comp, of the compact. It is up to the individuals, individual states to enact legislation to authorize nurse licensure compact. It simply means that you can be licensed in North Carolina and then be able to get a license in, say, Tennessee, because I um, did that. Um, and then I came from Tennessee and came back to North Carolina. But of course, I was already licensed in North Carolina. Um, I just wasn't practicing in North Carolina. So it's great to know your compact states if you move around a lot. Um, but we'll accept your <coughs> license from the state you were. OK, uh, nurse practice. Practice Act uh, credentialing. They do certifications, um, and this defines credentialing <coughs> process. Um, it, ANCC is the American Nurses Credentialing Center, and it's a sub subsidiary of the American Nurses Association, and they certify nurses in specialty, specialty practice areas. Um, it's a non-governmental agency and recognizes competence. Also, they accredit <coughs> providers of nursing continuing education. Um, federal organizations that affect nursing standards are joint commission. Um, so credentialing actually is defined as formal identification of professionals who meet predetermined standards of professional skill or competence. Um, like an RN, and uh, federal organizations affect nursing standards are Joint Commission and Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Nursing students are responsible for their own actions, um, so nursing students are allowed to practice nursing without a license while in an approved nursing education program. They're held accountable to the same standards of the care of an RN. Safety first, just say no if you don't know how to do something. <clears throat> Standards of practice um, is nursing, is, is uh, self-regulated by nurses. Nursing self-regulates it, excuse me. Okay. Um, advanced directives. Uh, used when no longer able to communicate, the person is no longer able to communicate their preferences directly. It's a legal document, and it expresses an individual's <coughs> desires regarding medical treatment. Patient Self-Determination Act is a formal written document that typically outlines the client's desire. Patient Self-Determination Act is federal law requiring health care institutions receiving federal funding uh, must give clients written summary of self-determination rights and facilities policy on recognition of advanced directives. Um, so we must ask the clients if currently have advanced directive. The client is responsible for providing a copy. Facility must not discriminate based on whether or not an individual does have advanced directive and notify clients of this. Um, types of advanced directives are living will, what to admit or refuse if unable to make own decisions at the time of care, 
So it's a formal written document that typically outlines the client's desires regarding use or withholding and hydration and or TPN, which is total perennial nutrition, um, resuscitation or intubation in life-threatening emergencies, <coughs> and then a durable power of attorney for health care or surrogate or proxy, um, designation of authority, have designation of authority to make decisions on the client's behalf when the client is unable to do so. So health surrogate or a proxy is what that's called. Elements of advanced directives. Um, the sur surrogate decision maker has the authority to consent or refuse medical treatment or diagnostic procedures. Hire or discharge medical providers. Authorize admission to medical and long-term care facilities. Have access to all medical records. Consent to conform con to comfort care, pain relief measures, and any measures to carry out wishes. Each state determines the specific requirements for advanced directives. Usually, they must be witnessed by two people and may um, be on a specific legislated form. Witnesses usually are not relatives, heirs, or primary care providers in most states. So the role of the nurse in advanced directives is to reassure clients and families that they have option to change their decision, assess whether the client's families have accurate understanding of life-sustaining measures, and be supportive of the client's decisions. I know everybody's had some contact with HIPAA. Health Information and Portability and Accountability Act um, was written in 1996 by Congress and the purposes of the HIPAA Act is um, to minimize exclusion of pre-existing conditions, designate special rights for those who lose other health coverage, eliminate medical underwriting in group plans, Includes a privacy rule, which you're all ask about whenever you go into the doctor. Health care providers and health insurance plan providers. National standard for disclosure of private health information. So health information protected by privacy rule. Um, individually identifiable health information. Electronic <coughs> paper or oral transmission. Information that identifies individual name, address, date of birth, social security, past, present, or future physical or mental health or condition. Uh, provision of health care to individual past, present, or future payment for provision of health care. Um, access to medical records. Required notice of privacy practices and opportunity for confidential communications. Limits on the use of medical information to those directly involved in providing care who needs to know the information, and prohibition of the use of personal information for marketing. Privacy versus confidentiality. Privacy is the right of individuals to keep their personal information from being disclosed. Confidentiality is the assurance of client has the private information, assures the client that the private information will not be disclosed without the client's consent, um, request and record only information pertinent to the client's health status, and only disclose to those directly involved in care. Individuals may file formal complaints if they feel that that health care, their health care plan or provider violated the HIPAA rights. Nurses need to be familiar with their employees' policies on privacy. Um, examples, name cannot be posted near or on a room door. Charts must be kept in a secure, non-public location. Even when you're looking at the charts, the name should not be showing outward. It should be inward or flip the chart over. Um, you never want to... Um, 
printed copies of protected health information should not be left unattended in a printer or fax machine. A lot of times, when well, when you did paperwork in clinical, now you're doing SIMCHAR, um, all of your paperwork needed to be turned over, even though you just had the patient's initials on it. You just have to really be careful with all that stuff. Even um, client present in healthcare setting is protected information, so you can't even say that somebody's there. Um, and nurses professionally are obligated to curb gossiping and just need to know stuff. <coughs> Mandatory reporting is the legal requirement to report an act, event, or situation that is designated as reportable by state or local law. So certain types of health information, certain vital statistics, um, certain communicable, communicable diseases like TB, HIV, AIDS, E. coli, and others. Also abuse or neglect of minors or older adults. Um, report is required information through the institution's chain of command and all info reported is documented in the client record. Um, good faith immunity, suspicion in good faith required in most states. Um, nurses in violation of the Nurse Practice Act, North Carolina, if there's reasonable cause to suspect a nurse violation, has duty to report to Board of Nursing. So the Nurse Practice Act dictates action to be taken on any incompetent, unethical, or illegal conduct by nurses. Certain injuries or illnesses are also need to be reported, like bullet and gunshot and firearm wounds. Illnesses suspected to be from poisoning, knife or sharp object wounds, or from acts of violence. This is a list of the nationally notifiable <coughs> infectious conditions that need to be reported. Um, and I don't have to go through all those, but there's that list. Often mandatory reporting also is child care workers or other people that have mandatory reporting are child care workers, teachers, school personnel. Um, if they report if they are suspicious of child abuse or neglect. School administrators are required to report any knowledge that crime committed on school, that there was a crime committed on school property, such as assault, sexual assault, rape, kidnapping, indecent liberties with a minor, possession of a firearm, and a possession of a firearm on school property. So in summary, minimizing your chance of liability. Um, function within the scope of education, job description, and nurse practice act. Follow procedures and policies. Build and maintain a good rapport with your patients. Always check the client's identity. Observe and monitor the client. And accurately communicate and record significant changes. And some other ways, uh, promptly and accurately document all assessments and care. Um, it's important that you go, I encourage my students to go right in um, as soon as you're, you've taken on the responsibility for assessing your patient, you need to go right in the room and, and do it. Um, because as soon as you assume the care, you're responsible. So if there's a problem, you want to be able to pick up on it right away. So get in there and Probably get your assessment done so you know if there's changes in the patient where you started from. And then document. Uh, of course, you can't document at Rowan, but um, <coughs> typically you would go ahead and document your assessment and your care as soon as you move in. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, but make sure you get in there and promptly do your assessment. Be alert when implementing nursing in, in, uh, interventions. Uh, perform procedures correctly and appropriately, and administer the right medication in the right dose via the right route, the right time, to the right client. Delegate appropriately. Protect clients from injury. Report all incidents. Always check any order that is questioned. So if you can't read an order, which until we have them on the computer, or can't be 
quite frequently. Um, you need to get it clarified, or if you don't think it sounds correct to you, you need to get it clarified and question it. Just don't um, blindly say, okay, well, that's what he ordered. Because we have to use our nursing judgment. And of course, know your own strengths and weaknesses and maintain clinical competency. About quality improvement, quality um, defined by the IOM, Institute of Medicine, is the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired health outcomes and are consistent with current professional knowledge. Quality management um, is preventive approach to address problems before they become crises. Quality improvement is the systematic procedure to measure client outcomes, identify hazards and errors, and include improve client care. Um, and as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, the Institute of Medicine's report in 2000 to Air is Human, Building a Safer Health System, that there were 98,000 deaths in hospitals each year from preventable medical mistakes. So that's kind of scary. Um, the Committee on the Quality of Health Care in America 2001, Crossing the Quality Chasm, is a uh, focus to develop a new health care system that improves health and help health care professionals keep up with the rapid changes in technology. Um, chronic diseases are now the leading cause of illness, disability, health problems, and affect almost half of the U.S. population. The current system is complex and fragmented and disorganized, and we're trying to work on that. So the six aims for improving the health care system are um, to make it safe, to give time, to make it timely, effective, client care, or client center, excuse me, efficient, and equitable. Those are the six aims for improving the health care system. So the recommended changes are that we need to give evidence-based care, um, we need to reorganize practices, individualize for clients who need more time, broad array of resources, and closer follow-up. We need to have systematic attention to client need for information. We need to have ready access to necessary clinical expertise. We need to have supportive information systems. So the national in initiatives are the National Database of Nursing Quality Indicators, the ANA, put out in 1998, uh, Patient Safety and Quality, an evidence-based handbook for nurses. Um, nurses have the unique position for participating in quality surveillance, 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 yeah. Measures, <laughs> evidence-based practice and client-centered issues, focus on functioning of the hospitalized older adults, pediatric safety, and nursing work environments. The National Patient Safety Goal is written by JCO and revised annually requires all accredited healthcare organizations to meet the goals des designed for their specific type of facilities. The Institute of Healthcare Improvement has no tolerance goals, no needless deaths, no pain or suffering, no helplessness in those served or serving, and no unwanted waiting and no waste. So implementing quality improvement um, we're going to uh, measurement of the care delivery status and quality improvement moves from a failed standards to proactive approach. So it's not a reactive after occurrence, it's a proactive to try to make quality improvement. 
it involves everyone in the organization and all are accountable. So um, breach of care or breach of duty occurs when, a, when the nurse deviates from the standard of care, can be med errors, communication errors, failure to monitor and assess, working while impaired due to inadequate sleep or substance abuse, negligent or inappropriate delegation or supervision. Report problems in care, care delivery. Chain of command, start with your immediate supervisor when you're reporting all of these. Um, sentinel events are considered unexpected occurrences involving death or ser serious physical or psychological injury or the risk thereof. And joint commission um, is each agency must define <coughs> sentinel events for itself consistent with JCO's definition. Um, reviewable events may be different from one type of facility to another. And healthcare facilities encouraged but not required to self-report all sentinel events. Some of the reviewable events may include any event that results in an in unanticipated death or loss of permanent function that did not occur as a result of the client's underlying condition, unanticipated death of a full-term infant, discharge of an infant to the wrong family, rape occurring on facility premises, surgery on the wrong client or the wrong body part, Suicide of any client in staffed 24 hour setting or within 72 hours of discharge. Group cause analysis is recommended by JCO in response to the Sentinel events where they identify the factors that led to the Sentinel event or breach of care. They focus on systems and processes. And the goal is to determine which organizational improvements are needed to decrease the likelihood of such events reoccurring. Components of quality management programs are based on integrated system of information and accountability. Comprehensive quality management plan is multidisciplinary, critical paths, focus on client outcomes, and impl implementation continually evaluated. Benchmarking is defined as the method of comparing standards to actual performance. Three dimensions of quality <coughs> care. Structure, they look at, our physical environment, organization, management of organization, or context. The process connected to the actual delivery of care or actions. Outcome results of the evaluation of care or endpoints. Um, indicator is a tool used to measure the performance of structure, process, and outcome standards. Intradisciplinary assessment and improvement is within the discipline, so they are peer-reviewed uh, within one discipline. Nurses assess and judge performance of other nurses against current standards of care. Um, outcomes management, they measure and evaluate cost and quality to improve clinical practice. Care can be redesigned based on these outcomes. Audits is examination of records for accuracy. Um, retrospective audits are after the client's discharge. Concurrent are during the client's course of care. Um, interdisciplinary assessment and improvement is among the discipline, like utilization reviews uh, mandated by JCO to see if resources are being allocated appropriately. Um, they do audits and they also do peer reviews.
measuring quality improvement, total quality management, or TQM. Um, Dr. W. Edward Deming came up with four core characteristics of metric measuring quality improvement. Um, customer or client focused, both internal employees and external customers, clients, visitors, insurance companies. Um, total organizational involvement, <coughs> teamwork among departments, using quality tools and statistics for measurement, plan, do, study, act, and identification of key processes for improvement. Continuous quality improvement is never any process to improve quality, performance, evaluation, actions, mindset, to strive constantly for excellence. Four major players are a resource group, coordinator, team, and team leader. Six, six Sigma is a measure of how much performance varies from the standard. Um, they have a goal, a management system, management involved more than in other quality measure programs. And the six themes are customer focused, data driven, process emphasis, proactive management, boundary free collaboration, aim for perfection, and tolerate failure. Um, Lean Six Sigma focuses on improving process flow and eliminating waste and provides tools to use with Six, six Sigma. Um, improving the quality of care cost reduces cost by preventing misuse or waste of important resources. Nurse staffing, evidence that increased nursing staffing results in better client outcomes. That makes sense. Um, medication errors, client involvement in managing own care with nurses providing education to clients and families regarding medication administration. Risk management focuses on a problem, and the purpose is to identify, analyze, evaluate risk, and develop plan a plan for reducing frequently and the sever severity of accidents and injuries, and nurses play a key role in this. Um, functions, continuous daily program. Once incidents occur, they recognize the incident, quick follow-up and action, personal contact, immediate restitution if appropriate. <clears throat> so we're trying to create a blame-free environment. Goals is most errors are due to the system failures. Goals are to correct the system failures, prevent future mistakes, and ensure client safety. Reprisals discourage reporting can lead to continuation of problem areas. Organizations implement system-wide <coughs> equitable policies to create a just culture. Um, of course, there's exceptions to or intentional um, problems um, to the blame-free environment, like failure to report adverse event or error, criminal acts, false reporting, refusing to participate in system design to prevent errors. Those are not blame free. So, in conclusion, all nurses must be involved in quality improvement. Nursing students can, can do so by commitment to never perform an act if a student is uncertain how to perform it, show accountability for actions, and admit to errors if they occur. Human behavior can vary and still be effective. In other words, there's more than one right way to do things um, for lots of nursing and medical interventions, but you just have to make sure that they are, they're sterile, they remain sterile, and don't break the, the major points that um, they should. A uh, system that discourages any variance can reduce creativity, which may sacrifice improvement in quality. Organization 
may cease to be effective at that point. So organizations must find ways to foster creativity without comp compromising quality management. So, one way. <laughs> um, so that's any questions? Um, <laughs> You guys want to take a quick break? No, ma'am. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready to get out? Take notes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions they can think of? Um.
that's a common um, hazard for newborns and infants. Suffocation. Yes. How could it be terrible if in the section on like all the different types of levels of laws? I guess I'm not sure what you're asking exactly. Like if a question says, um, is this rule covered under this, this, or this, talking about the American, the Board of Nursing, the... I know, there's a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah. Is it basic, though? It's kind of basic, yeah. I hope I don't leave it there for a moment. Um, Jaco, what they're responsible for, OSHA, um, Nurse Practice Act, Nurse Practice Act, know that, what, you know, what does that cover? Um, you know, who's responsible for the NECLEX exam? Uh, who handles disciplinary actions? Those kind of, they're pretty basic. I'm sorry, the hospital's national patient safety goals, what are they wanting to improve? And who writes that, or who, who determines that? Jacob. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, I know what the patient, national patient safety goals are. 